Hi there, Geek Girl on Wheels here again, and today I am going to teach you how to make one of these little tiny cake forms. If you follow my Instagram, you'll have been noticing that I've been posting lots of these little tiny cakes, which I actually turn into hair clips. And uh, there's many layers to them, so we're going to start with the bottom today, and then I'll show you how to make different toppings in my next video. So, first, I prefer using a tan yarn, like this cake here. Now you can layer your yarns if you want. Um, and I will crochet along and get you all set up to make a cake. I'm going to be using my hook. It's tiny, as you can see, and I'm using a heavy sports wig cream-colored yarn. So this tan yarn is what I'm going to use today. And I'm just going to take this and put that in my lap so that I can keep my hook and my thread here. So first, I'm going to start off with a slips. I slip knot, like so. Now, I know lots of people do magic circle, but I'm terrible at it. So I chain four. One, two, that's right, three, four. And then I go back to my first stitch and slip stitch through that. So I've got this little tiny circle. And then from there, I chain one and I'm going to single crochet six into the center of my little circle. So take the yarn around once, single crochet one, single crochet two, single crochet three, four, five, and six. Once I've finished all that, I'm going to pull it tight by pulling on the tail. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the first chain one that I did. And finish off that round. So there we are. We've got our six starting stitches. And then I'm going to chain one. And I'm going to put two single crochets into each single of the last six stitches bringing it up to 12 stitches to go around two three four five six seven eight nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then I'm going to take and slip stitch into my first chain one that I did before. And we have completed round two. So now I have 12 stitches. We're going to continue to increase. This time we're going to chain one to get up to our next level. Then it's going to, I'm going to single crochet in the first single crochet and two single crochet in the next. And I'm going to repeat this all the way around. So there's my one and two, then one and two. And one and two. All the way around the circle. And 
finish off with my two single crochet up. Sometimes my needle, my hook gets stuck because I have very, very tight tension. There we go. And again, finish it off with a slip stitch through the starting chain. And we have gone three rounds. So there's the beginning of the top of our cake. Now we're going to chain one and do one single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second, and two single crochets in the third. So just like that, all the way around. So one single, two single, and two together. All the way around. And when I get, I am back at my end here, I'm just going to slip stitch again to join the round. And there we are on that. We're gonna do one more time around the top of our cake. We're going to single crochet three in the first three stitches, and then we're gonna crochet, single crochet two in the next. So it's one, two, three, and then two in the same stitch. One, two, three, two in the same stitch. And complete this all the way around. And the last two stitches, one, two, and slip stitch into that first chain as I push too hard with my hook. There we go. Slip stitch to that chain. And there we have the top of our cake. From now on, we're going to single crochet. But we're going in this first round, we're only going to go through the back stitch. So we're going to chain one and go through the back of the stitch and single crochet. And through the very the back side of the stitch. And this will make the shaping for it. So back side of the stitch. And complete that. All the way around. Always using just the back of the stitch. And when you should come all the way around, you're going to slip stitch into your chain stitch that you started this round on and there you go you now have the edge to your cake so there's your top there's your edge and now you're just going to do a single chain and then single crochet all the way around to form your next row And again, slip stitch through that first chain. That, and your round is complete. Now you're going to keep doing this until your cake is as tall as you'd like it. 
I have some shorter ones that are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds, and taller ones that are in eight and such. So make your cake as tall as you want. And I'm going to make mine go around, and I'll be right back to show you the next step. And I'm just finishing up my last row. And I'm going to go through my chain one again pull it through and this time I'm going to make a really long tail and cut it. The reason for the really long tail is we're going to use this tail to sew on the bottom of the cake. So just pull that through that stitch there nice and tight and we have the body of the cake. There's the top, there's the body, now it needs a bottom. So, Duke. we're going to do the exact same thing we did for the top of the cake. So we're going to make a slip stitch. And if you do magic circle, do magic circle. I do four chains. One, two, three four and then I slip that right back through Oop, the first chain and slip stitch that together chain one and then I'm going to put six single crochets in my hoops so one two and get all the yarn through there. There we go. Three, four, five, and six. And then slip stitch into my first chain. One, if I can find it. There we go. Nope, that's too far over. There we go. And slip that together and pull on the tail to make it all nice and tight. There we go. That's what we're looking for. And from there, I'm going to chain one. And we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch like we did before. So, one, two, one, two. So that we have 12 stitches and then slip stitch into your first chain, pull it together and there we go. So it will be one single crochet in the first single crochet and then two single crochets in the next one. I just have a knot in my yarn so I'm going to take a second here. So now that I've got the tangle out of my yarn I'm going to chain one. And then it's single, whoop, open up here, single crochet, and then two single crochet in my K 
camera here is moving around on it. And then single crochet and single crochet twice in the same stitch. And then single crochet, two single crochet. Just the same as we did with the top. Lip stitch into that chain one from the start of the row. My camera is slightly drunk. It's very, very hot here. And my camera is on a single leg pod. So the tape that I use to keep it up is giving me a waddle. So give me a second, I'm gonna fix this. And then we chain one, one single crochet in the first, one single crochet in the second, and two in the third. And all the way around, repeat the pattern. One, three, same stitch, four. And again, slip stitch together and we should need one more round sorry about my camera difficulties today so we've got this and we need just one more round so it's a chain one single crochet one single crochet two whoop, two single crochet in the next stitch for three and then four and five in the same stitch and repeat that all the way around so four and five Somewhere along the way I lost a stitch so I'm just going to add an extra one in there to fix it up. I'm going to slip stitch through so I've got my stitching again. Now this fits the bottom of your cake. So you're going to cut off your yarn, leave a little extra because we can hide all the tails in this easily. Pull that through. So you want to take your cake top now, Whee. put the string, the end, right inside the cake, and you're going to thread the long end through your darning needle. I usually twist the yarn a couple of times to make it nice and skinny, and loop it between my thumb and my finger, and push it right in through, and pull. Ta-da! Now put your other tail halfway around. This way if you didn't leave a long enough tail on your cake end, you can pick up with the other end and keep going. So what I like to do is I stitch through and then each little loop matches a loop on your bottom. So you just match the two loops right up and around you go. And because we did this in the round, all the stitches should line up exactly stitch for stitch.
Now I'm three quarters of the way around my cake. So at this point is when I want to get my stuffing, my filler. I just use a little bit of teddy bear stuffing, um, the polyfill stuffing for stuffed animals. You can save up your scrap yarn bits and stick those in there too. I stuff my cake. Fill the top and then give it a push. You want to make sure your cake is firm but not making both of its its top and bottom explode. So there we go, nice firm cake. Finish sewing it up. And there it goes. I'm sewn all the way around. Now, I don't need to cut my thread, my the rest of my yarn off. I'm just going to push it through a stitch, put it right back through the cake, pop it out the other side so that I've got most of my end in my cake so it's nice and hidden. I'm going to give a little push on the side that the thread did come out through, just like that, and snip it off. So now there are no ends showing. All your ends are inside your work. You can sort of fluff up your cake now, flatten out the bottom. I like to push the bottom in a bit, like this, gives it a little layer to it, makes it stand up nice and firm, and then give it a pat on the top. My favorite icing for these is, uh, you can use, let's see, I've got some that are fabric paint, the puffy paint. Um, I love, I absolutely love using these little studio glitters, glitter glue that I get. Um, I find these at Wal at Michael's for $1.50 and I can get about four cakes out of that. So that's not too bad. I got this purple one, which does about six to eight cakes at Dollar Tree. Um, then you can get solid colors. Um, this is a Scribbles paint. Scribbles Pop, and this one is in Wild Raspberry. I think I'm going to get a bigger bottle next time of the Wild Raspberry because I use so much. I use a lot of the, the pink and the chocolate. And if you'll notice, I store, you'll notice the bottle here. All the glue is in the bottom by the tip to work with. It's because I store my bottles standing on their heads so that I don't have to squeeze and squeeze and squeeze to get my glitter out, my glitter glue out. So... You want to leave, if you're going to make these types of little toppers, which I will show you in my next video, um, you want to leave the very center here empty. No glue, no paint, no anything on it. Leave it free so you can sew the ends through it and connect everything together and see you have the little bottom. So you just take your glitter glue, and you work it back and forth like cake pastry, like you're icing a cake. And then when you've got a fair bit, you just swirl it around with the tip. If you over glitter, it will run away on you and run down. I have one cake that did that, but it looks really good for it, so I wasn't too upset. And glitter glue all over the top. Sort of drag it along. It's okay if you go over the edge because you're going to want to go over the edge in areas anyway. So that you've got your icing dripping down off your little cake. And you swirl it around and swirl it around. Okay, so now that I've got most of the top covered, I'm just going to add a few in other places, I'm going to slowly work this along the edge. The shaking is my hands, not the camera. It's just a condition I have. 
but it doesn't stop me any and it helps make little scribbles turn out into really neat cakes so Woo! And now I just got glitter all over myself. I have the dropsies today. But so you just want to go along the very edge here and drip it down. And drip it along. I will go back and clean up anything that I finger smudged. So you want to keep gripping it by the bottom. Keep along the edge, drip it down, along the edge, drip it down, along the edge, keep everything together drip it down and along the edge now I'm gonna go looking for any blobs that I fingerprinted I don't seem to have done any fingerprint damage it mostly was glue getting onto me and not getting all over the place so that's really good to know come back here fix my little spots and then I am going to set this down Let it sit uh, four to six hours. I usually just do a bunch of cakes. If I'm going to be doing more than one of these little guys, I just I work on a bunch of cakes, I glitter them, and then the next day I sit down and I work out their toppings and reshape them because they're going to they're going to turn into a nice hard crust top, and then you're going to want to reshape them tomorrow and give them a bit of a hug and whatever. So the more of the glue that's done completely, the better. I've got glue all over me. And the other thing I like to add is, excuse me as I get glitter glue all over myself, I like to add bits of, uh, I've got um, mini marbles on those, I've got other glitters. These are some of my favorite, they're little tiny heart glitters. And I literally just sort of drop one or two at a time. I've got the fan on in the room, so that helps spread them around. It adds a nice finishing touch. You can add tiny beads. You can add glitter flakes. Whatever you want to your cake to make it look pretty. Um, you also don't have to add um, the crochet topper to it. You don't have to add this. You can always use a, 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 a cabbage, cabbage in and put that on there or, or a piece of polymer clay fruit or whatever if you like to do polymer clay. So this is my little tiny cake. Poor thing looks a little disheveled. And that's all you need to do. It's very simple, very easy. I can stitch a couple of these in a day. They're one of my favorite things to work on because they're just something you can sit back and once you get going, you're good. Uh, thank you for watching my tutorial today. Uh, you can leave me a like if you like this one. And I will, if you're looking forward to doing toppers, I'll show you strawberries, cherries, and two different types of whipped cream coming up next. Also, hit that subscribe button so you know when my future videos come along. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm always posting pictures of my new cake designs and my new crochet designs on Instagram so you can catch up with what's new there and just leave me a comment on one of my videos back here on YouTube and let me know if there's one from the picture you'd like me to show you how to make. So this has been my tutorial for today. Hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye-bye.